What up, dude bros? I'm Frank. This is a video review of the Herja. This blaster is a flywheel powered, fully automatic, half dart magazine fed sidecar blaster. <laughs> <laughs> this is the blaster alone, but it's designed to fit on the side of an existing primary. Super cool blaster, very well designed. Let's get into it. So external overview of the Herja, it is important to note this whole thing is 3D printed. It's super hard to tell from like more than 10 feet away because the print quality is just insane. But external overview, starting up at the front, there's no in-strike barrel lug. Right below the muzzle is an on-off switch, which is super convenient because these triggers are super easy to accidentally touch. So on-off switch, or you could think of it like a trigger safety if you want. Up on the top of the blaster is a Picatinny rail. Then to the side of the blaster is the mounting point. So this blaster blaster again is designed to be a sidecar blaster. It's not really designed to be a standalone blaster. I guess you could technically walk with it, but it doesn't have a grip, so that's kind of impractical. But it's attached to the Nerf blaster using these little mounting plates here. So there are three mounting options, Picatinny, Nerf, and Rival. I've had the best luck with the Picatinny. It's easiest to place and it clamps down, so it's really firm. And since Picatinny rails are coming on more and more high velocity blasters, I think that's a great mounting option. And the little mounting adapter is screwed in and you can take it off and switch it over to the right or the left. This whole blaster is super modular and super customizable. So if you mount it on one side, you can remove the mounting plate from the other side to make it a little slimmer. Or you can move the Picatinny rail over there if you want to. It's super customizable. And below the mounting point on each side is a trigger. There's one on the right and one on the left. These are redundant triggers. You don't have to push them at the same time. You can push either one to shoot it. And it's a one-stage trigger that's responsible for revving and firing. It's not a two-stage, so you can't pre-rev. You just push it and start shooting. But there's also a plug-in option for a remote trigger. So in the back of the blaster, there's a little XT30 connector, so you can shove this in like that. And then at the end of this wiring is another trigger, so you can push this one instead of these two. And again, it's redundant, so when you plug this in, you can still use these if you want to. This allows you to customize your rig so you can run this little wire and attach it to some other part of your blaster. You can activate it with your rear hand back here so you don't have to reach up to fire, which is a super cool feature. And if you don't want it, you just unplug it and you don't have to use it. Moving on at the bottom of the blaster is the magazine well. This blaster is compatible with Talon and Talon clone magazines. It is not compatible with the Dart Zone half mags that I've tried, but who cares? Talon mags are the best on the market, so use them. <laughs> but interestingly, there's no magazine release on this, and I didn't think this was going to work, but it works really really well. So instead of a mag release button in here, there's just two little spring powered balls, but it automatically retains the magazine when you push it in. And surprisingly, you can really whip this around and the magazine never came out. Yet when you want it, you just pull and it comes right out. So the mag well and the mag retention work really, really well. Moving back underneath the blaster is the battery tray. To get in there, you need an Allen wrench to unscrew the single screw. Then you pull off the battery cover, which exposes the XT30 connector. This is not an XT60 connector. It's an XT30 connector, which looks super similar. It's just a downsized version of it. And this blaster runs on a 3S LiPo battery. Battery. Keep in mind, this battery area is very, very tight. I'll link you to the LiPo that I'm using that I know fits, but I'd stick to one of the batteries that Out of Darts recommends on his website. He lists a few. I found the easiest way to get it in there is to pull all the wiring out, load the battery in first, and then very gently tuck the wires in. Be gentle with the wires in these exposed solder points. And you have to hold the wires down as you replace the battery door. Then you reinsert your screw and you're ready to go. That's an external overview of the blaster. To use the blaster again, you turn it on and then press the trigger. There's no rev switch and it's a single stage trigger. So it is just simply push the button and it fires. However, that firing mechanism design did cause a few different jams, which I will show you in the firing demo. And this blaster comes with two different rate of fire options. I'll show you both in the firing demo. So let's see it shoot. Shooting red worker gen three half length darts out of a worker 18 round talon mag. Call your hit, bro. <laughs> now I'm gonna try to intentionally induce a jam by burst firing. Yep, there it is. Jam right there. Ammo left in the magazine. And there's a dart trapped in the flywheels. So when I press the trigger, it jams up. Get a thin rod, shove it in there. Dart drops out, you're clear. Shove it back in there and you're ready to fire. Operating this blaster is super fun. It's like the perfect sidecar blaster. Now explaining the jams that I had repeatedly. The jams only occurred during burst fire. When I pushed down the trigger and dumped the entire magazine, I did not have a single jam or malfunction. I only jammed the blaster when I was just tapping on the trigger. And that's because it's all wired up together. So when it starts to slow down, the firing mechanism is still loading rounds. And eventually the flywheels start to move so slowly that they cannot actually discharge the dart. So the dart goes in and then it just completely clogs the flywheels. If this were a primary blaster, that would obviously be like a super big deal. But as a sidecar 
blaster, it's really not a big deal, but it is worth noting and it is worth paying attention to. Just make sure you're mag dumping. Yeah, be trigger happy like me. That's the way to win. <laughs> but overall, a super fun play experience with this blaster. To compare it to others, I put it up on my chronograph. Now this blaster was super hard for me to chrono because I can't pre-rev it, but it chronoed somewhere between 80 and 100 FPS with worker gen three darts. Sorry, I can't be more precise than that. This one was tricky to run through my chrono. So that's the objective information I can provide on this blaster. Now to my personal opinion. Overall, my opinion on this one is super high. It is a bare bones, minimal, no bigger than it absolutely has to be sidecar blaster. I love how customizable it is. It's so easy to adjust. So if you want to run it on your right hand side and then you switch up your gear and you want to move it to the left hand side of the blaster, you don't have to buy another blaster. You don't even have to buy another mounting plate. You can just unscrew it and move it over. And it already has the redundant triggers built in. So you buy one of these and it's pretty much future proof. Meaning no matter what primary you're running, you can just snap this off and throw it on your new blaster. It's designed really well and the ability to customize it moving forward is super useful. So overall opinion is super positive. A few complaints are room for improvement. First, burst firing causes a jam really repeatedly. Now, if this were a primary, that would be an absolute deal breaker that would drive me crazy since you don't want to have to commit to a mag dump. That's kind of lame in a primary. But as a sidecar blaster, I really think that's totally fine. I'm going to mag dump anyways. <laughs> but moving forward, it would be cool if right when you took your finger off the trigger, the feeding mechanism somehow stopped. Not sure how they would achieve that internally, but that would be an obvious improvement for this blaster. Next, it would be cool if they changed up the design of this switch here. It's really cool that they have a remote switch and it works really well, and I think it's all really well thought out. But given the popularity of Picatinny rails, it would be really cool to see one of these customized to fit onto a pick rail. On a tactical carbine, when you run a flashlight up in this position, you very often run a momentary switch mounted to the pick rail that sits very flat on the rail that you're able to just activate quickly with your thumb. I think this trigger is designed more if you want to put it really close to your trigger like that. You could use hot glue or just some double-sided tape and leave it up there. But that's not even a complaint about the blaster. That's just a request for more parts. And I love how it's not a permanently wired in thing. So if you don't want it, you just pull it right out. And that's a recessed little port. So it's totally not in the way. Super clever. But again, overall, super high opinion on this sidecar blaster. Now to the question, to buy or not to buy. If you're looking for a half dart magazine fed fully automatic sidecar blaster, yeah, definitely buy this one. It's the best and only one that I've used. But not everybody needs a sidecar blaster. That's a very specific role. I think it would pair really, really well with something like the Worker Harrier, how I have it configured here. The Harrier is a high powered accurate springer. The Worker could be used more for long range work, but then if you get really close to somebody, you could press this and completely light them up. That'd be very satisfying. <laughs> and if you decide to buy one, you're able to customize what colors you want it printed in, which is super cool. And there are two rate of fire options. And the rate of fire choice, in my opinion, should come down to your magazine capacity. If you're running higher capacity magazines like this 18 rounder, go with the high rate of fire for sure. But if this magazine is too long and will get in your way, you can use a shorter magazine and then use the lower rate of fire option, which will let you take more advantage of that lower capacity. But that's just my opinion. But what a clever design. What are they going to think up next? This is one of these things. I didn't know I wanted it, but then I saw it. And I'm like, I need that. <laughs> and now I'm glad I have it. It's super cool. So that's the review on the Herja. Thank you very much to Out of Darts for sending over these sample units. If you'd like to buy one of these, check out the link in the description box below. That's it for this video review of the Herja. Am I rustling your jimmies with that pronunciation? I'm doing that on purpose. Rustle the jimmies. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, bros. And as always, stay tactical.